All right, we're not quite in the dumpster, but we are at the yeah, expo, the scrap expo, and I'm sitting here with the side metal crew and man i'm stoked i get to watch your guys stuff on linkedin all the time and yes, uh you guys like inspire me to keep keep grinding because you guys Thank are like you. the young up and coming guys that are like really building something and you know i don't know what it's going to turn into but i know it's good so Thank welcome you, man sir. thanks for at least thanks for at least me calling you into coming on my podcast thank, thank you for, for having us I'm excited so, guys, so what do you guys think about the show so far? Like, what do you guys, like, what's what's stuck out to you, I guess? I mean, I think it's awesome. Um, we got to see a lot of different equipment. My favorite thing was going out there and running the, the new Fuge. So we got to run all the 2022 models. Oh, you did? So yeah. that was really cool. What year cool. do you guys have at your facility? Because you guys we, have the Fuge too, right? Yeah, we just got a 2019. Okay. Believe, yeah. so, so is it the same size? Um, or just one? Bigger? I believe it's a little, ours is a, ours is a 350. So Same size? Yeah. Okay. So you guys all three run it? Um, no, well, I, I like doing that out there because I kind of don't run the machines too much. Yeah. I'm more, um, I go out like cold calling a lot, so that was nice to be able to get in the machine. Out there. So you are more on like the sales side, like purchasing side? Or? Um, yeah, we all work in the yard, but once we get everything done, I go out and like cold call those machines pretty much. Try to get some dumpsters set up at different places. Yeah. Get up some new business. So what got you your guys' start? Like what got you to start in the scrap recycling business? How did... Well, so so I graduated. What's the longest tenured? Well, in the business? I guess so. I graduated in 2020, and I started just as a summer job. Um, and also, when I was like 13 or 14, I also worked at Sods. Um, back then, I didn't really have as much fun. I, I kind of I didn't really like it as much. I was just picking up little scrap on the ground and stuff. I didn't really see the, the Maybe bigger, like the grunt, like the yeah, grunt work. I didn't really see the bigger picture of it, but uh -huh. I came in back after high school and um, pretty much I just started torch and skeleton plate and it, it started off as a summer job for me. Okay. And um, then I kind of decided like against going to the college I was going to go to, like I stayed at home and did some online classes for yep. a year, then decided to take a year off. The year off went really quick and I was really liking work. so. Now I'm just. So did you recruit these two guys, or? Well, yeah. So I've known these two yeah. since like sixth or seventh grade, and okay. they've known each other even longer. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of brought them on board. They seen I, I had a pretty fun job, so yeah. Now it's it takes one guy to recruit other guys. Like, I always tell people, like, even for me, the only reason I've had success is because I kind of I just had luck by timing, right? Like I was able to get started in 2004 and then in 2004 or five the market started to kind of gain a little momentum and yeah. i just graduated from college and i was like and my dad i was talking to my dad i'm like we need to grow like we need to do something he's like well where are you gonna get all the people i'm like that's my job right like i'm gonna go get yeah. so i started the guys i played football with guys that they knew and then i just started recruiting guys that were my age yeah. 22 years old they just wanted to like build and do something. Yeah. So I had kind of the luck of timing because the market was starting to gain a little bit of speed, momentum. And that's how it starts. Like one guy that says recognizes the opportunity and then yeah. other people come along and they're like, okay, this is like, this is a legit industry. Like this is a legit For sure. business, you know? And I mean, there's like real, you don't have to have a college degree to do what we do. You just gotta have good self awareness and okay. be willing to go to work and bust your ass. Like for a good solid that's ten years. That's right? where I come from. I saw yeah. me and Alex have been friends since like seventh grade and when he started I just saw everything he was talking about, like learning at the yard and stuff and I found it so fascinating. So yeah. Can't miss out on the opportunity. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. We both started last June and we started torching as well. I torched all last um, summer and then I went to school. Okay. But I kind of was in the same boat as him. I just wasn't as happy as I was back at the yard. So I decided to stop. And the past three months have been the best three months of my life pretty much. So it's definitely a blessing. If I could have one job in the scrapyard, I'd want to run the torch. Torch? That's all I torch. want to do. Like, it can, it can, be, I, it can be tedious, but like dude, you, you get to just it's a nice, like, Now break. it's a break. Now well, dude, break. if you run the torch, man, like here's the deal. Like why I love the torch. A... Like, I could, you could throw some headphones in and just, like, be sure. exactly. like in your own world, yes. right? Yeah. And B, it's like building a house. Like, you can see it going up, right? Like, torch pile, like, you start with this big pile of shit. 
and you just chip away at it and chip away at it and chip yep. away at it. Next thing you know, like this big pile turns into this small pile. Yeah. Like, you could actually yeah. do something with it. And yeah. you see and trucks come in and pick it up and you realize like that's helping grow the business. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you're, awesome. you're contributing, right? Like yeah. you can mm-hmm. see the work you did. Like if you're behind a computer for the day, you're kind of like, it's, it's hard to really know how much you got done. Like so yeah. your emails are significantly less. Like you, you know, yeah. but when you look at your torch file and you see how much shit got cut, mm-hmm. like you can, you can see the work you did for the day. I like yeah. having a full layout. And then once you get all the pieces cut, having, we call Merv on the walkie to come clean it up. And it's just satisfying watching that pile just yeah. grass. <laughs> it's nice. Cause some days, like some weeks we'll come in, the pile's so small cause um, we sold a lot, but then it just builds right back up quick. So, it's so what's satisfying. your favorite gig is that to do? Mm. VR? Like, what if you, uh, at the yard, yard, at the yard, honestly, just working with like different people. Like I get to get out. Like I feel like over COVID, I didn't get to meet a lot of new people, and like my people skills kind of were going downhill. Yeah. But once I got back at the yard, like going out to businesses and cold calling, that's helped me a lot. And like especially networking events, yeah. it's definitely helped me a lot to just get my name out there and just build like relationships. Like uh, when I started, I just thought it was more about like obviously what we do and how we help people. But like a lot of the times, you don't even have to mention it. You just have to build a good relationship, and that stuff will come. Yeah. It's like taking the long approach, right? Yeah, yeah like, we're definitely long term. You have to, I mean, especially at your age, like people your age, they're trying to like get rich tomorrow, right? Yeah. And yeah. they're just, you know, I, I would say a lot of times they're stepping over dollars to pick up nickels because they want the nickel right now. But if you just put your head down and just build a career, build the relationships, yeah. find people that can help you do your job, like, and do more, you can actually build. It's crazy what you can build for sure. when you get the right amount of people in the right spot doing things. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way that I can do half the shit I do, right? Yeah. Is, I mean, Sky doing what she does, Marissa, Nick, like so many people that, you know, enable you to like be able to yeah. be creative. And, and you also going. just like, you never know what connections like. It could be a connection in a totally different industry or company, and they might yeah. they might know someone that's able to help you. Or yeah, so definitely, I would say the connections is definitely something that I like a lot. And then working in the yard, um, I don't know. I don't get to do it too much, but like I said, like I like I got to run the shear a couple of times. I like cutting stuff up. That's fun. Like and the events like this help you build those relationships, right? Like mm-hmm. now I've got to run into you guys twice. Like. Yeah. You know, you start, you, if you go to a few events, and you know, you don't have to go to every single history event or every single, you know, scrap expo, whatever, like whatever makes sense for you logistically, cost wise. But if you go to the events and you chip away at it and you're able to, you know, see, see people a couple times a year, drink a beer or coffee or whatever you're allowed to drink, then it is what it is, right? Yes. But I mean, it is a relationship driven business and that's kind of, I mean, it's super important to to build those, especially when you're young and you've got you know the energy that you guys can work 20 hours a day, you know, if you want to. Like you guys got, you guys can put put the time in and just mm-hmm. focus on that in five, 10, 15 years down the road. It's also nice to have like something we can work towards. Like I, I feel like we all knew we wanted to like start something, but like we never had a direction to go to. Yeah. So like Dan and Michael have really like pushed us to like our certain roles that they feel like we'd like be best fit for. So it's just, it's definitely nice to have them. Do you ever have those conversations with Dan and Michael and say like, what do you see me doing five, 10 years from now? Do you guys have those conversations? Yeah. A lot of the times we don't even have to ask them. Like um, Dan and Michael, like they like preach it to us like all the time pretty much. Like they always like, they'll tell us when we're not doing the best, but they definitely like let us know when we're doing good in certain areas. Like straight up good, honest feedback. Like yes. when you, when, yeah. you know, when you recognize what yes. you're doing. Honesty yeah. is the biggest, um, that's one of my biggest things, like with previous jobs, it's very nice to have bosses that can be completely, like, brutally honest with you when they need to be. It's definitely nice. Yeah. So what are you doing every day? Are you running a torch? Uh, a torch, you- we have a shed where we bring in, like, retail, yeah, retail from customers, a smaller yeah. amount of metals, yeah. and we separate them, weigh them up, print out the tickets. And I'm also, I've picked up editing with okay. like the videos and the Oh, on the back end side, yeah, yep, yep. I've come to enjoy that a lot. Um, just taking videos, we're making a vlog as yeah. we're here to this week. Nice, um, nice. But yeah, or who's who's doing the video work? Are you guys are you doing it, or you got somebody doing the the vlog? Or are you guys oh, just boy. shooting with your phones? Or boy, what? Adam, huh? Yeah. Adam, we have yeah. a connection. Adam, he helps us a lot. 
he's kind of teaching me the ropes. Nice. Well, um, also, another younger guy you met, Kerry. Um, yep. We met in Misery. Yep. Um, right now, he's so he just started back up at Millersville University back home. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So he's kind of a little more busy and not able to work in the yard as much. So then Isaiah picked up helping, like, Kerry taught him some stuff in marketing and doing the videos and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. It's definitely like, you guys have a good like young yeah. crew, right? Yeah. 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 I'll have to like, pick up for you. Like what we've learned is that like when one person's not able to work in this area, we just have to pick each other's slack up and just yeah. yeah. And we all have to teach each other everything we know, so there's no like yeah. So you know like like, like, like a well machine. One of my favorite like stories about us is, is Nick, right? Who you guys know? Yeah. Like I tell people this all the time because because I just want them to know, you know, when Nick came to asked for a job nick ran aluminum cans for almost two years that's what he did every day Hmm. and like shitty retail aluminum cans right every day for two years and every day he just showed up and ran cans right and i was like dude and he was happy yeah because he and he was just busted his ass and people asked me well how do you know nick how you and i was like i went to high school with nick but i didn't know nick that well but i just appreciated like his work ethic yeah. Just how hard he went at it every day, how he always just had a smile and he could always see the future. Like he knew that there was something, right? Yeah. We we didn't know we didn't know we really put our hands on it, but he knew that there was like something, right? Yeah. So we just all there was shit that like I need help with, he would like I'd be like, Hey, talk to this customer, can you get him lined out? And he'd be like, Yep, I can do that or he'd be like, Hey Brad, I need you to come in, let's go talk to this customer. I mean, yep. So, but it's a lot of just helping each other out. Like yeah, if he's yeah. sick or he's yeah. he just wants to take one of his daughters somewhere, and you just have to pick up the slack for him. Yeah, that's we have to do that's that. That's a big big I'm deal. Pretty much, like he's um, he can't do the set and edit a lot. Like it's not as a, as effective. Mm-hmm. So um, Gil, he's not here with us. He's running the yard right now with Dan, but he's been helping cover the shed so Isaiah can have time to edit. And I'll never be able to get out to like cold call businesses without like him picking up my slack at the yard or him picking up my work. So we got like a, a good group. I love it. I love it. So what's the coolest thing you've seen today? Today? What sticks out the most? Um, probably just seeing everybody. People? Just being in the environment we're in, you know? Yeah. I was a year ago today, I would have never been able to come out here or talk or shake people's hands and all that stuff. What changed? And it's just. Like what, um, what made you be able to do it? Uh, the, the support of my team, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Like, I was never really confident. And everybody's just, they kept pushing me. So you can do it. I never believed in myself, I guess, but everybody else does. And that's what and sometimes, really, like, what it takes, right? Yeah. For sure. And then once you get that little spark, that little spark, then it's on. Everyone like, needs that push. Yeah. I think sure. so. And I think for that sure. little spark is like what's the, like, like it'll be game changing. I bet. Yeah. I bet you run circles around most of these people ten years from now, just because you just needed that. Like, right. exactly. let's go. I've known Isaiah since we went to the same babysitter together since we were born. Uh-huh. So I've known him forever, and I always like had a feeling that he'd be working with something with computers because he'd always have like two <laughs> monitors up in his room, and I just always knew he'd be good at that stuff. So I'm happy. You were like hacking it's or like, anything, were you? <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people don't really understand. Like, they might look at this like. At our scrapyard, it's like, why is he like working on editing or whatever? But it's just kind of like you said, like trusting that person and where the business is going to go. Kinda. Well, and my thing is, is like if you don't, if you're not willing to put that time, effort into like showing people what you do every day and how you're doing it, like how are you going to grow? I mean, I, I was I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they said, and they said, you know, pull out your phone and look at your screen time for the day, right? My wife and I have had this conversation a fair amount of times and I'm, she, and I'm like, and I'm almost like, like I look at it, I'm like, oh man, I spent that much time on my phone. But like the reality of it is like on my phone, I'm like posting videos, posting posts, taking pictures, like talking about what we're doing every day and, you know, my thoughts on what's going on. And I feel like if you want people to know that you exist as a business, then you have to be willing to show people something of value like hey this is what we're doing this is what we're building every day and here's my team here's what here's where we're at like you know you might there might be people out there with more money than us or better equipment than us or whatever the case may be but 
you're not gonna out fucking work us. Yeah. Like you're not gonna out hustle me. Yeah. Like you might have, little, you know, your dad might have more money than me, but you won't out hustle me. Yeah. And I think that's what we've always just tried to yeah. show people that it's show possible. people that we have like a like we're we're working with all of the we're all around our guys. So like there's not really like it could be like a shitty day in the yard, but we're all together. So we're gonna so, get through it. So because uh, Dan's not here, right? Yeah. Give me a funny Dan story. I want to like oh let's call gosh. him out. Uh, oh no! Yeah, give me a funny. Give him. Give me a funny oh, story. I can give you something that's that the Dan won't mind you tell. <laughs> we could talk about this. Like so, one day there, we used to have. So there was another guy who ran the who ran the shed like back, like a couple when I first started, and I just remember being like in the other in the other room like off outside of the shed or whatever uh-huh and i just heard like someone scream like it sounded like a little girl screaming <laughs> and i went in and it was it was dan and the guy who used to run the shed was holding up this snake because that's dan one of dan's biggest fears so yeah. he doesn't like the snakes dude i so i've always been my whole life deathly afraid of snakes like i don't like snakes and then when i got done with school i moved in my own house i went and got a snake yeah like i went and got a ball python and and my my mom's like do you have a snake like the kid who like doesn't like snakes i'm like dude i had i had to get one Basically just shit. to get over i to get i was i'm that guy right? i was like i've been so scared of it for so long like even garden snakes like you know that i know ain't gonna bu- dude i don't and so i'd get it and i'd like get it out of the tank and like handle it and shit and yeah. i'm still i still don't like them but and i would just just to just so i could try and prove to myself like Okay. There you go. It's not gonna, but, but so I know Dan's feeling like I I know that. Feeling. Whenever if you ever see like a we see a snake running through the yard or whatever, or a dead one or something, everyone's like, someone's always gonna send that to the group chat in the <laughs> yard. <laughs> so do you guys have like a group chat? You guys are all on. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Do you guys uh, mess with each other on it a lot? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There's all some right. Stuff that's in humor send there. like the little gifs and stuff. Some of my best messages are like the group chat messages. I love oh, it. Yeah. Like just because you can sit there and like ride each other a little bit and be like, yeah. hey. <laughs> it's, it's definitely funny. Well, fellas, I can't wait to sit in the dumpster. Yeah. I'm gonna, gotta, gotta I'm gonna figure out it out. I'm gonna either come yeah, by I'm or here. I'm gonna come see you, and uh, and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep grinding. So much appreciated. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming out, man. Yep. And uh, keep going. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. You guys are the next generation. Like you guys are. It's you guys are what keeps it makes it fun. This is this is what it's about. Thank you. Thank you for having us on. All right, fellas.